Gold has got it all. Soft yet strong, rust-proof, an attractive glint. And valuable because it's so rare. Of every billion atoms of the rocks in the Earth's crust, only one is of the precious yellow metal. At the old Royal Mint in Sydney, I think of all the gold that came through here to be stamped into coins and wonder where it's ended up. In fact, if you could take all the world's gold that's ever been refined throughout human history and put it into one place, you'd have a cube 20 metres each side, which would fit neatly into this courtyard. That may seem less than you thought, but when you're a nanotechnologist working at the scale of millionths of a millimetre, it's plenty. Yeah, we'd probably go through $5,000 of gold a year. Which isn't much in the grand scheme of oh, things. Oh, it's a little bit of gold like that. But um, the point about nanotechnology is a little bit of gold goes a very, very long way. Mike Corti makes gold nanoparticles so small, he's only had the technology to see them in the last decade. Oh, what kind of microscope is this? This is a scanning electron microscope, and I'll show you what it can do. Oh, please do. Fitted with a special in-lens detector, it can get to nanoscale resolution. It's got amazing magnification, and in the right hands, we can zoom it up to a million times or so. Because suddenly, we could see the stuff we were making. Opened your eyes? Yeah, absolutely, because before that, we were kind of flying blind. And here's what the microscope reveals. Gold nanorods. That's only a 20 nanometer scale bar. That is really tiny. And they were all about the same size, which is what we want. We want a nice, clean distribution of rods. It's not easy to see, but this is a gold nanorod. It's only about 300 gold atoms from end to end. That's about 60 nanometers in length. And if it was to scale, I'd be the size of a single red blood cell. The dream is that nanoparticles like these could revolutionize medicine. A lot of medical treatments flood your body with some compound, and there's a lot of collateral damage. So if you can target this treatment only to the site of the disease, this is, would be very attractive. But why gold? Its chemistry is quite unique because although gold doesn't oxidize in the body, it will selectively form quite weak bonds with sulfur atoms. Turns out amino acids, antibodies, proteins, they've all got sulfurs in them. So you can actually stick on antibodies and things onto a gold surface in a very controlled way. And despite their size, the smaller the particles get, the greater their area to stick things onto. Take a cube and lay the surface flat, and you can see how much of that cube can react with the outside world. Divide the same cube into eight little cubes, and the surface area doubles. With decreasing size, the surface area as a proportion of mass becomes immense. More surface means more area for reactions. In theory, you might get to 100 meters squared per gram. So this little gram of gold, which is like sits on the tip of your finger, it's got maybe 100 square meters of surface. Even the color of gold changes with the shape and size of nanorods as they resonate at different wavelengths of light. Well, each of these is a batch of nanorods, and they're subtly different. As you can see, different optical properties, uh, different wavelengths they absorb. But none of them look very gold. No, well, that's it. They're, the bulk gold color has long been lost by the time it got to the nanoscale. To custom make his own nanorods, Mike starts with a small amount of dissolved gold. It's about $10 worth of gold. And I guess we'd make about 10 to 100 billion nanorods. He prefers nanorods because of their optical properties. By controlling their length, they can be tuned to turn specific wavelengths of light into heat. And we add some silver nitrate, which helps control the shape. And we have lots of surfactant in there to stop the particles sticking to one another. And we add a little bit of gold seed, which are tiny gold particles, to act as nuclei for the rods. And all going well, uh, we grow rods. Gold nanoparticles of various shapes are proving useful for medical treatments, such as for cancer. Billions of round nanoshells are infused into the bloodstream to carry proteins that seek out tumours, and once inside, destroy them with heat by absorbing infrared light. So this is a team in Texas, and my first thought was, damn, why didn't I think of that? Because what they realised was really neat. While clinical trials in the US target tumours that don't move, 
Mike's team has taken the idea one step further. What if you want to target something that's mobile in the body, like an infectious protozoan parasite? Could you do it? Their target, Toxoplasma gondii, a brain parasite that causes the infectious disease toxoplasmosis. We decided we would give it a bash. Uh, we picked that one because it has never been done before. By coating gold nanorods with a protein, they mimic antibodies produced by the immune system. Like antibodies, the nanorods stick to the parasites. When zapped with a laser, using wavelengths of near-infrared light that transmit through tissues, the nanorods heat up and kill the toxoplasma parasites. With this proof of principle in the lab, an even more deadly disease is now in their sights. Well, the big one that immediately comes to mind is malaria, because it is also an infectious protozoan. It sort of does the same sort of things as toxo. Whether for cancer or malaria, nanomedical treatments are still years away. But for something so vanishingly small, gold nanoparticles have much to offer.